A month after Jack Stilwell's 18th birthday, he volunteered for a suicide mission. Jack and 48 civilian scouts, under the command of Major George Forsyth, came under attack by an overwhelming force of Cheyenne dog soldiers, led by the legendary Roman Nose. The frontiersmen fought their way to a little sandbar on the Rickera River and hunkered down to make a stand of it. Digging in and firing from behind dead horses, Stillwell and the others repelled charge after charge from the determined warriors, giving and sustaining their fair share of casualties in the process. When the smoke finally cleared after that first day's battle and the sun sank into the horizon, four scouts were dead along with 15 wounded, including Major Forsyth. Things were looking dire, to say the least, and sometime around midnight, young Jack offered to go fetch help. Of course, in order to do that, he'd have to somehow slip past several hundred warriors keenly intent on making sure he didn't see his 19th year. Be that as it may, Stillwell and another scout by the name of Trudeau departed under the cover of dark. The pair removed their boots so as not to leave clear tracks and crawled on their bellies until they made it through the thick of the Cheyenne. And onward they journeyed, 85 barefoot miles traveling at night subsiding off a rancid horse flesh and, on one occasion, concealing themselves within the carcasses of dead bison. Finally, against all odds, Stillwell and his companions stumbled into Fort Wallace and delivered Major Forsyth's dispatch for help. And despite Jack being thoroughly exhausted and his feet mangled from the thistles and cactus needles, the young man insisted on joining the relief party that rode out to rescue his beleaguered comrades. A fellow scout would later describe Stillwell as one of the bravest, nerviest, and coolest men in the command. Interesting story, right? Be that as it may, I'm willing to bet that a lot of folks have never heard of Jack Stillwell, affectionately known as Comanche Jack Stillwell. But if you're a fan of Western movies, and I think you probably are, you've most certainly heard of Jack's little brother, Frank. And while his name might not ring a bell right off the bat either, I'm positive you've witnessed Frank's death at the hands of Wyatt Earp on more than one occasion. Who was Frank Stilwell? Are the stories of Comanche Jack hunting down Wyatt Earp true? Oh boy, you called down the thunder? Well, now you got it. My name's Josh, and you're listening to the Wild West Extravaganza. That skirmish I just described, known today as the Battle of Beecher Island, occurred in late September of 1868. And believe it or not, as young as Jack Stilwell was, that was not his first rodeo. After running away at just the tender age of 13, Stilwell found employment along the Santa Fe Trail as a teamster. Then, while still not old enough to shave, Jack took to hunting buffalo on the southern plains. Brave in the lands of the Comanche and Kiowa when they were still free and wild and more than willing to scatter his bones over several hundred acres. This experience led Stillwell to secure employment as a post guide at Fort Dodge. And then, when Forsyth Scouts were created in 1868, Jack joined up, and, well, the rest is history. In the years following the battle, Stillwell continued to scout for the Army, serving with the likes of George Custer. Phil Sheridan, Renal McKenzie, and Buffalo Bill Cody. Jack would again see action against the Cheyenne on several more occasions, along with the Apache and the Kiowa and the Arapaho, and even his namesake, the Comanche. Hell was Jack and just one other man who ventured alone into the Stake Plains and talked old Quanta Parker and his band of antelope eaters into surrendering. And once the Indian Wars began dying down, Stillwell found work as a deputy U.S. Marshal hunting down outlaws in the nations, and surprisingly, helping to protect the people whom he once scouted against. I don't know about you, but I'm of the opinion that Jack Stilwell led one hell of a fascinating life. Scout, guide, Indian fighter, lawman, friends with Custer and Cody, this dude was the epitome of the Wild West. Yet, as I touched on previously, Stilwell remains a relatively unknown figure. Not really all that surprising, considering that the more well-known Old West characters are the ones whose lives have been turned into movies, right? Billy the Kid, Jesse James, Butch and Sundance, and yeah, Jack's brother Frank, who, according to the internet, has been depicted three times on film, most notably in the 1993 blockbuster Tombstone. And you know the scene. 
It's dark, the train is getting ready to pull out of the station when Ike Clanton and another man step out of the darkness and holler, Hey, Maddie, where's Wyatt? Right behind you, Stillwell. Boom! Kurt Russell, a.k.a. Wyatt Earp, unloads that scattergun and blasts the mystery man straight into the beckoning arms of his maker. And that man, portrayed by the actor Thomas Arena, was Frank Stillwell, the real-life kid brother to our very own Comanche Jack. Now, Frank was one of the main suspects in the murder of Wyatt Earp's brother Morgan just a couple of days prior. And from the looks of things, this was not the prodigal sibling's first dance with the devil. Way back in October of 1877, Frank allegedly shot and killed a ranch cook outside of Prescott, Arizona, after the man made the fatal error of serving him tea instead of coffee. Which, I mean, come on. Let's be honest. Before anyone gets to talking to me first thing in the morning, I'm gonna need my coffee. And if you try to hand me a damn cup of watered-down tea instead of a mug of black coffee stout enough to float a horseshoe, well, I might be in a shooting mood too. Unfortunately, this was not the extent of Frank's criminal endeavors. A couple of years later, he and a buddy would be accused and tried for clubbing a prospector to death, although the jury ultimately found that there was not sufficient evidence for a conviction. Frank would then, ironically, pin on a badge and take up work as a deputy for Cochise County Sheriff Johnny Behan, a career that was short-lived as Stillwell was soon fired for quote-unquote accounting irregularities. Just a few weeks later, Frank and fellow cowboy Pete Spence would be arrested after holding up the stage out of Bisbee, which partly led to the famous gunfight at the OK Corral, and eventually Frank's fatal run-in with Wyatt at that train depot. And the tension really did escalate on March 18th, 1882, when, at nearly 11 p.m., Morgan Earp was enjoying a game of pool at Tombstone's Campbell and Hatch Billard Parlor when someone, possibly Frank Stillwell, fatally shot him in the back. The following day, the 19th, is Wyatt's 34th birthday, which he spends preparing and coordinating the shipping of Morgan's remains back home to California. It's also decided that Virgil Earp, still recovering from his own wounds sustained in a separate ambush, would also return to the Golden State, along with his wife, Allie. They departed for the station in Tucson the next evening, escorted by Wyatt, little brother Warren, Doc Holliday, Sherman McMaster, and Turkey Creek Jack Johnson, and waiting for him to arrive, just slinking in the shadows, or so the story goes, is Frank Stillwell and Ike Clanton. Now, depending on which account you subscribe to, the Earps either noticed Stillwell and Clanton right away, or were alerted to their presence a little while later after they finished eating supper. Whichever way it shook out, Virgil and Allie are placed safely back on the train, as Wyatt and his Avengers, armed to the teeth, set out looking for a little satisfaction. According to Earps, Stillwell took off running, quote, helpless and trembling for his life, end quote. Wyatt pursued and claimed that once he caught up with the fleeing outlaw, Frank tried to grab a hold to his shotgun, at which point I let go with both barrels, and he tumbled down dead and mangled at my feet. Now, there were witnesses who stated that they saw Frank running with at least four men in pursuit, after which they heard several gunshots, likely Wyatt's shotgun blast followed by his buddies making sure that Stillwell was good and dead. If that's the case, then this does jive with one Tucson resident who recorded in his journal considering the incident, quote, Frank Stillwell was shot all over, the worst shot up man that I ever saw, end quote. It also tracks with the coroner's findings that Stillwell had been shot by five separate weapons. I guess when Wyatt and Doc Holliday and old Turkey Creek Jack Johnson want you dead, they like to make damn sure. And you know what happens next. Wyatt and the Avengers all have warrants issued for their arrest as they embark on the legendary Vendetta ride. And it looks like Frank's older brother, the aforementioned frontiersman extraordinaire, Comanche Jack Stillwell, upon hearing the news, set out on a little Vendetta ride of his own. Maybe. This is one of those depends on who you ask type situations. Sources claim that Jack made a beeline for Arizona, looking to even up the score with Wyatt Earp. I even found one account that places Stillwell in a posse riding alongside a Pete Spence, Ike Clanton, and Y. Johnny Ringo. Others, however, maintain that Jack simply came to Arizona to close out his deceased brother's affairs, which is not altogether out of the question considering that Frank, at one point, did own several businesses in the area. While in Arizona, Jack naturally conducted his own investigation and learned all about Frank's less-than-stellar behavior. 
his stage robbing proclivities, and the murder accusations. It's thought that if Jack did initially entertain thoughts of vengeance, he soon changed his mind after learning all the details. Whatever the case or cause, Stillwell soon returned back to Oklahoma. And as far as I know, he and Wyatt Earp never did come face to face. Kind of makes you wonder what would have happened if the two had encountered one another, though. After all, neither man was exactly lacking in nerve or grit. Could have been an epic showdown, or it could have just been an anticlimactic meeting of the minds, like what occurred between Pat Garrett and the brother of Billy the Kid. You know, when I was little, they used to have these comic books called What If. At least that's what I think they were called. Each issue posed a question like, what if Spider-Man never married Mary Jane? Or what if Captain America was elected president? And from what I can remember, each story was kind of its own little alternative reality. Just a way to imagine fun little twists and turns and think about how things could have played out differently. And after considering the possible rendezvous between two heavyweights like Wyatt Earp and Comanche Jack, I'm thinking maybe we need a similar project focused on the Old West. You know, like, what if Jesse James had been born in Pennsylvania, instead of Missouri? Or what if Billy the Kid had joined forces with John Wesley Harden? What if Wild Bill Hickok squared off with Clay Allison? What do you think? Good idea? Dumb? Ah, hell, it ain't like I got the time to do it anyway. Now, Comanche Jack, in addition to going on to work as a deputy U.S. Marshal, cowhand, and ranch foreman, would also become both a lawyer and a judge, as well as being twice appointed as a U.S. commissioner by President Grover Cleveland. But I reckon all them hard miles in the saddle, dodging bullets and arrows, took their toll. Suffering from ill health, more than a few broken bones, arthritis, and possibly, according to one author, alcoholism, Stillwell and his wife moved up to Cody, Wyoming, at the behest of his good friend, Buffalo Bill. It was there that Jack looked after Cody's ranching interest while he was traveling with the Wild West Show. And it's also where Jack was occupied as the land commissioner for Bighorn County. At least he was until February of 1903 when, at just 52 years of age, pneumonia did what no warrior of the Cheyenne Nation was able to. It was the end of the line for Comanche Jack, whose real name, by the way, was Simpson Everett Stillwell. If you ever get to feeling like paying your respects, you can find Stillwell resting up there in Cody, Wyoming at their Old Trail Town Cemetery. Not too far away from another infamous Indian fighter and former topic of the Wild West extravaganza, Liver Eaton Johnson. Link in the show notes for the episode I did on Johnson, who, if you're not aware, was the inspiration behind the excellent movie Jeremiah Johnson. Also, check out the old episode I did on the Battle of Beecher Island. Link also in the show notes. If you'd like to learn more about Forsyth Scouts, Roman Nose and his warriors, and of course, young Comanche Jack's actions during the famous battle. Oh, and just in case you're wondering, so far as I can tell, Jack got the nickname Comanche on account of his mastery of the Comanche tongue and familiarity with their culture. And that's about all I got this week. Short episode, but don't fret, we shall return next Wednesday with more true tales from the wild and woolly west. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for your continued support. If you're new here, please head on over to wildwestextra.com. And while you're there, hit that contact button. Let me know what's on your mind. Let me know if you have any suggestions for future episodes. All right, till next time, don't name your kid Simpson or Everett or Jack for that matter. If you want to give him a cool name, just name him Comanche or Josh. Adios. I'm going to need my coffee. Hey, we'll get back to the story in just a moment. But first, I got to be honest with you. I'm doing this full time now. The Wild West extravaganza is, as we speak, my job. And to tell you the truth, this is sort of a gamble. I'm gambling on myself and I'm gambling on you. To make this work and to continue bringing you true tales from the Wild and Woolly West in an unfiltered and uncensored fashion, I'm going to need your support. 
And at this moment, the absolute best way you can support the Wild West extravaganza is by becoming a member of Into History. Into History is a podcast subscription channel made by history lovers for history lovers. Not only will you get to listen to the Wild West extravaganza ad-free, but you'll gain early access before anyone else. You also get bonus content. There is currently Wild West extravaganza content on Into History that you cannot hear anywhere else, not even on Patreon. And there's a lot more to come. You'll also get to participate in the book club, the community forum, the upcoming live streaming events, and best of all, you won't have to hear my annoying ass voice break into the middle of a story like I'm doing right now. And guess what? You also get everything I just mentioned from all the other shows in the Into History universe, offering the same perks. Come on, what are you waiting for? Go to intohistory.com forward slash Wild West Extra. That's intohistory.com forward slash Wild West Extra to become a member today. I love you and thank you very much for assisting me in helping to keep the Old West alive. Back to the show. <laughs> 